Hey, and welcome to your getting started guide with the discombobulator inside of ZimWriter. I love saying that word. It's a fun tool. You won't use it for every situation, but I want to explain what it is because you might find a really great use case for your situation. So before I explain what this is, let me give you the use case. All right. So we can go to the bulk writer, for instance, and put in some different titles. So these are some different titles for different types of barbecue chicken, uh, slow cooker, barbecue chicken, Southern barbecue chicken, zesty, slow cooker, barbecue chicken. Okay. So if we were to write an article about each of these, we'd configure our options. And if we wanted to SERP scrape, we'd go into this option over here and click enable SERP scraping and then set some different stuff. And then we'd write the articles. And as it's writing the articles, what ZimWriter will do if you've enabled SERP scraping is ZimWriter will use scrape out to go out and perform that Google search, find the, the best five URLs, best five web pages for that query. And the query would be like, for instance, recipe for zesty slow cooker chicken. And then it would summarize each of those five URLs. It would use the AI to summarize each of those five URLs. And then all of that SERP data and all of those summaries would be stored into the database. Z uh, ZimWriter has a database. It stores 5,000 of those SERP scrapes and then also 5,000 different scraped URLs with corresponding summaries. Okay. What if you wanted to further manipulate that data that's in the database, those summaries of those URLs co corresponding to each one of these titles? Okay, so again, maybe we've written our blog posts already, but we wanna further manipulate these. Maybe you wanna come up with some different social media posts about these particular topics that you're writing about, or maybe you wanna extract some factual information, or maybe you're revisiting these articles later in time and you want to see if there's something else that the SERP talks about now, some updated information that you want to pull some data out from, okay? That's where the SERP discombobulator comes into play. We'll close this and we'll click on AI Vault and we'll click on SERP discombobulator. There's a directions link up here. It takes you to this page, very useful information, okay? Because we're going to create custom prompts for this, but the custom prompts are, are slightly different than what you're used to, okay? So this is the discombobulator. And we can put in up to 250 different search titles. Now, these search titles would typically be your blog post titles. But basically, whatever you put in here on a new line is going to be the search query that ZimWriter is going to use to go out to Google and perform that search scrape. Okay. So often these would just be your titles for your, uh, your different articles that you already wrote. All right. Then you can select up to two different custom prompts. Okay. So we don't define the custom prompts in here. If you want to define the custom prompts, You'll first go into the bulk writer, for instance, and you'll set your cut. You can define your custom prompts in here. Okay. Now, again, we can load custom prompts for running the bulk writer, but we're not doing that. We just want to define our custom prompts, save them to the, the database. I have two in here. I have recipe, write the name of the recipe and the steps to make it along with ingredients, write only two paragraphs. I think I spelled ingredients wrong. And then, so we saved this as CP recipe. And I have another called CP Facebook post, write a Facebook post for the recipe. It should sh list the exact ingredients and step-by-step -step directions to prepare the dish. Okay. I'm going to leave the bulk writer. We've created our custom prompts. I'll go back into the discombobulator and we'll put in our different, different titles in here. Let's just do two right now, since we're on camera and I want to speed this up and we can select the different custom prompts. So we'll say recipe. And then I'll say Facebook post. And what this will do is it will take the aggregate of the, the summaries from those five URLs for each of these titles. So SERP scrape for this, got five URLs, did a summary on it, aggregated them together into one giant summary. Okay. It will run this prompt on that aggregate summary for this. It will run this prompt on that aggregate summary for this. Okay. That makes sense. If you want to stack the prompts, you can also do that. And what that will do is maybe you wanted a first prompt to run on that aggregate summary and a second prompt just to run on the result of this prompt right here. Okay. If you want to do that's when you want to enable prompt stacking, you can read more about it in the directions link. Okay. If you want the output to be in non-English, that's where you specify this. Remember, everything needs to be in English going in, but this is where you can say, okay, I want non-English coming out. If you do prompt stack, okay, only prompt two, the result from prompt two is going to be in non-English. If you don't prompt stack and you put something in here, 
you'll have a translated version for each one of these, okay? You'll give this a job name and we'll give this like on camera test, okay? And we'll say create discombobulated output and save to CSV. And what it will do, so it's running it. And you'll see this underscore over here in the corner. Underscore two means it's running prompt two. Underscore one means it's running prompt one. It's discombobulating title two, prompt two right now. When it's all done, you'll see a little pop-up up here and you'll have a, a nice Excel sheet. Now look, you're gonna see some, depending on what your prompt was, you might see some nonsense in here, like some stuff that doesn't make any sense. See like these characters and stuff. Excel has a problem rendering some of these characters. So you'll have to load this stuff up inside of Google Sheets. So I ran this prompt, this setup, on these four titles before the video, and here is the result in Google Sheets, okay? So we have the, the two paragraphs here, and then we have our recipe for the Facebook post. Two paragraphs here, a recipe. Oops, I'm scrolling too fast. Two paragraphs here, recipe, okay? So get this all in your, your CSV file. Realize the AI will follow your prompts better depending on the model that you choose. So if you choose Turbo or GPT-4, you'll get a better, better following of your prompts. But if you have a very simple prompt, something very easy, then just 3.5 Turbo 125 will work just fine for you. Trying to think if there's anything else I want to cover. Oh yeah. So the, yeah, let's do this. Let's go back into the discombobulator. This is the last thing I want to show you. The custom prompts for the discombobulator are a little bit different. We'll go to the custom prompt page. Now this is what a, a normal custom prompt, like in the, the bulk writer looks like when I send it to OpenAI. I have something called context and the article title or subheading title the text to modify, all, all this stuff. This is what a normal custom prompt looks like. But when you create your custom prompts that are going to be, and you create them in the same place, when you create your custom prompts to be used in the discombobulator, this is what I'm feeding into OpenAI, right? Data to process. It is basically the merge summaries of the five URLs that were scraped. And then I have this instructions bit, and this is where your custom prompt would go, okay? So inside, uh, do bulk writer, custom prompt. Facebook post. So this prompt right here would go right in here and the summaries from the, the merge summaries from the five different URLs go right in there and then you get your results. Use this in the playground, play with it a little bit. I explain how to get those summaries ahead of time so you can test this out in the playground and make sure your prompts are really dialed in. But that's all there is to it. Powerful tool. You're not going to use it in every situation, every different use case. Maybe some of you will never even use it, but I know some of you will really enjoy using it. Any questions, drop a comment down below, like this video, uh, subscribe. Uh, there's links to ZimWriter down below. Join the Facebook group. Other than that, good luck with your content generation, and I'll talk to you later.